a pleasant day to everyone so this is now the sub the part two of the lesson two on our introduction to criminology so i decided to cut into three parts our lesson two because it's very lengthy no we have discussed in the part one the three uh, school of thoughts no the 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 traditional school of thoughts the classical the neoclassical and the positivist now we will be discussing the personalities behind the early positivist criminology school and we will focus on this part two with the biological and psychological determinism no by the way when you say determinism we are referring to the various factors or various uh conditions that attributes or that contributes to the criminality or to the commissions of a crime once more this is dr ariel diman lusok the director of the admrc and this is now the discussion on the personalities in uh, positivist criminology so let's begin now with the biological determinism so the the first noted personality to this concept is none other than Charles Darwin. Okay, as we all know, Charles Darwin is the personality behind the, the creation of the theory of evolution of species. Okay, wherein he conceptualized that uh, men are a trans transition of the old or ancient generation species. Okay that man came from the family of apes although the said theory was later on discarded by succeeding theories so basically his study is focused on the physical anthropology again physical anthropology deals with the study of what crime in relation to the physical constitution or panglabas nanyo ng isang individual okay that theory was followed in 9, 1535 to 1615 by none less than Giambattista della Porta, who is an Italian physicist. Okay, so Giambattista focus on the concept of human physiognomy. Take note, is physiognomy. It is focus on the facial features. Yung mukha po, no ang kanyang unang tinignan. According to Giambattista della Porta, there are some facial features such as bump ano yung bump mga bukol bukol no o kaya mga irregular shapes ng face sa face those are attributes to the so called tendencies no towards criminalities pursuant to his study that study of de la porta was succeeded or supported by none less than a swiss theologian in the person of johann caspar lavater Okay, that was in 1741 to 1801. No, yung kanyang uh, what they call this yung period niya, no? from birth up to death. Okay, now this physiognomy or facial features as a basis in determining probability of criminal tendency was super was followed later on by cranioscopy. Okay, by the way, cranioscopy is the study of the shape of the human skull. No. Okay, in relation to one's personality. But this cranioscopy for the information of everyone is no longer used or existing because it was already replaced by a new term. The term is now prenology. Okay, which focuses on determining human behaviors of men, of persons, based on the shape of the skull. And the pioneering personality here is none other than Francis Joseph Gull, okay, a renowned neuroanatomist and physiologist as well. So, pursuant to the study of Franz Joseph Gull, the asymmetry of the skull is associated as well to the tendency of men to become to have a criminal inclinations. Okay, and this was supported by Johann K. Sparks them, and later on by no less than Charles Goring, no, who conceptualized also the idea of associating no, the shape of the skull in relation also to the intelligence of the person. And uh, he focused on the concept of hereditary characteristics. That's why for Charles Goring, he suggested that those people who suffer from some mental ailment or mental retardness 
or some suffering from sickness that can be inherited, he discouraged them no? to reproduce, to copulate, or to have a next generation. Okay? So that is Charles Coring. Now, following the cranioscopy, which was replaced by phrenology, there was also another study which is more on the system of measurement of the skull. We called it craniometry. Although this craniometry is not very popular in, in, in books on criminology, but this is now focuses on the measurements no, of the skull to be able to distinguish or to explain the personality of a person. Okay? Next to phrenology, we have the concept of physiognomy. Okay. So, what is this physiognomy? Also known, ah, no, no, not physiognomy, physiology, also known as somatoform. By the way, every time you encounter the word somato, that deals with body. Okay? That's why somatoform refers to the different types of body. No? As you know, in the Tagalog version or Filipino version, we have payat, we have mataba, we have masculado. No? At meron yung mixture or halo nito. Okay? So, isa sa pangunahing tao or personalidad na nag-aral tungkol sa physiology o yung body type in relation to criminality was Ernst Kretschmer. Okay? Si Kretschmer ay isa pong German psychiatrist who was able to identify body belt into three. Although actually, there are four no? mentioned in some books. They are the picnic, the athletic, the asthenic, and the fourth is the dysplastic. Okay, let's discuss them one at a time. When we speak of the picnic type, these are referring to those people whose body belt is a rounded shape. Okay, usually they have narrow neck and broad face, a little uh, not too tall, usually they're average in height. And these people are usually prone to commit crime of deception and a little of uh, violence according to Kretschmer. Okay, again, this picnic type of people are inclined to commission of crimes related to deception, fraud, and violence. The second one is the athletic type, which is considered as the most dangerous of the three. Because as described by Kretschmer, the athletic is the most probable no, body build to the crime of violence. Maybe that's because of the confidence that they have having that kind of athletic body. So when we say athletic body, this is characterized by masculine no? characteristics as, as, as the word connotes, no? athletic. Diba? When you look at athletic people, they're usually not bulk, but they are built with muscles. Okay? Hindi po sila mataba or chubby. Sila po yung mga maskulado. And tendencies... With that kind of body, it builds certain level of confidence and sometimes even becoming an egoistic person. Okay? Then the third one is the asthenic. Na madali po siyang tandaan, no? Kasi asthenic, no? Meaning payat. Yung picnic, kain ng kain, kaya mataba. So asthenic is the slim or what we call the lean type of personality or rather body build. Ito naman ay prone to commit the crime of petty thievery. As you can see, many snatchers are usually thin, no? Sila po yan. And uh, also, they are allergic most of the time. And they are also prone to commit crime of fraud. Okay? So, yan po yung asthenic, according to Kretschmer. Now, the same study was followed by William Herbert Sheldon. Okay? Although Sheldon, who is an American psychologist and physician, correlates body build not only with criminality but also with the possibility of their temperament, no? Meaning the temperament, the how they control themselves, temperament, okay? Associated to the concept of self-control. Now, according to Sheldon, he also categorized body build into three: the endomorph the mesomorph, and the ectomorph. The, the endomorph is actually the equivalent of picnic in Kretschmer. In short, they are the, what, chubby. No? They are the, the, the mataba, 
type. Okay? And just like what uh, Kretschmer said, which Sheldon agrees somehow, these people are prone to commit crime of deception and a little of violence. Now, endomorph is characterized with the temperament of viscerotonic. Ano po yun? Sila po yung mga happy-go-lucky and extrovert personality. Ano po yung extrovert? Yung they could easily express themselves, they could show easily the feelings, their emotions, through verbal or other ways. Yan po ang extrovert personality. Okay? And likewise, to Sheldon, the most prone to commit a crime of violence is also the mesomorph, which is the equivalent of athletic to Kretschmer, which is what? Yung masculine type of personality with the temperament of romotonic. Okay? Yung more of confident type of personality. Sometimes they are more to be described as the aggressive type of person. That's why they are more prone to commit a crime of assaults and violence. On the other hand, the last one is similar to asthenic of Kretschmer is the ectomorph of Sheldon, which is also the lean type or yung payat na uri ng isang body build. Ang kanyang temperament naman ay classified as cerebrotonic, meaning they are the silent, they are the introvert type of person. Ano yung introvert? Yung shy type, no? Yung medyo mahiyain o hindi basta-basta nakakapag-show, nakakapag-express ng kanilang feeling. Okay? So, that is the ectomorph. Now, under the biological, we have the this descriptions, you know? Ayan. That these are the body built or the body type according to research made by William Herbert Sheldon. The ectomorph, the endomorph, and the mesomorph. Now, following this uh, physiology comes in the concept of heredity. The transmission of both physical and mental traits of the parents going to their what offsprings or to their children via genes. Okay, so one of the well-known personalities which are as also in the board is Richard Lewis Dugdale. Now, why Dugdale is popular because he made a study about a fictitious family. Now, fictitious because he did not divulge originally the name of the family which he studied. But later on, it was shown that he studied actually the Duke family. Okay? Where the identified person that he searched for is Margaret Ada Duke much well known by the name Ada Duke na tinatagurian natin sa criminology na the mother of criminals. Now, why he was branded as the mother of criminals? Because based on the research study done by Dogdale, majority of the descendants okay, of Ada Duke are proven to be aligned to criminality. No? Majorities become criminal. Some become a prostitutes, there are some involved in uh, kidnapping or killing, and some are even involved in prostitutions, okay, uh, and other crimes. In short, uh, majority of the descendants of other Duke belong to the criminal category type, and that makes uh, Richard Dugdale believe that uh, criminal behaviors or personality can be inherited. Now, this was followed by Henry Goddard, okay, who is an American psychologist. Okay? Henry Goddard, on the other hand, made a study about a Kalikak family, okay? particularly with the persons of Martin Kalikak. Now, this time, he focused on the men who have been married twice, one with a woman who is a feeble-minded and based on the result of the descendants of Martin Kalikak to the said woman, majority of their descendants became also feeble-minded. Okay. Some become involved in criminality. Some become involved in prostitutions. Okay. Only few became normal. But later on, Mr. Martin Kalikak married to another woman which is now become came from a decent family with a good family background. And it turns out, majority of their descendants became normal and not involved in criminality. If there are some, there are very few 
are accredited or rather uh, attributed to criminality activity. Okay? And aside from that, by the way, the word kalikak is actually the origin of the word kali, no, which we said to be a Latin word which means beautiful. No, that's why when we say beautiful writing, we called it in QD as the calligraphy no, in question document. The opposite of kali is kako, which means ugly. Ayan. So, ulitin ko. The Kali is the beautiful. The Kako is the ugly. Okay? Now, Henry Goddard is also the one behind the development or the crafting of the word moron. No? Si Goddard po ang lumikha ng salitang moron. Since he is a psychologist, he was able to identify this kind of mental retardness. Take note, it's not illness, it's retardness. A condition of a person whose age is advanced but the mental or IQ level is similar to that of a child. That is a moron, particularly about 7 to 12 inch uh, age of mentality. Then this uh, hereditary theory was also supported by Ernest Albert Hutton. Hutton is known for the principle of hereditary no? inferiority. Ano po yun? That families or people who inherited hereditary characteristics that are inferior or considered defective are indicators of probability of becoming a criminal. Okay? So for him, People who were born with certain physical no, inferiority, defects, abnormalities, they are prone or they have the tendency or inclination to become criminal. Now, that's based on the research done by Ernest Hutton. Now, let's go to the psychological concept. There you are. Under psychological determinism, we only have a few personality to dealt with, okay? But in the modern research, there are so many personality to follow. But as I have said, we are only discussing the contemporary positivists, okay? So the first personality is Philip Pinel, okay? One of the founders of the French psychiatry who link between human mind and criminal behavior pattern. As a matter of fact, he coined the term money sans delire. Ano po yun? Yun po yung concept na madness. Okay? Madness. Okay? It's, it's, it's more of a form of insanity that the person can commit a crime no, without remorse and usually this term money sans delire is associated to psychopathic personality no people who can commit crime without remorse okay so yun po that was actually coined by pinel who is the founder one of the founders of the french psychiatry now his study was followed by henry mosley which is more known in our book no pinel is not much known in the book of criminology but he is earlier than mosley mosley is known for the treaty on homicidal insanity the book on insanity and crime and the book on physiology and pathology of mind so obviously he is also a psychiatrist why because his study is focused on the mental illness which is what insanity for him, people who suffered from insanity commits a crime because simply they don't really understand what they do are doing. As a matter of fact, when they commit a crime, they are not mad. Why? Because they don't know that they are doing something bad, which is contrary to a normal individual. A normal individual usually commits a crime because of madness, diba? Right? Because of being anger, being what? Uh... Too much emotional. No? So for Maudsley, he studied for so long okay, the condition of insanity. As a matter of fact, he even made an observation and uh, uh, yeah, actual observations of people who are in the uh, place of confinement suffering from insanity. That's why he was able to craft a lot of literary articles associating mental conditions such as insanity to crime. Okay? Following Mosley is none other than Gabriel Tarde, 
who focused on the penal philosophy. Although Cratarde is much known in sociological determinism, which we will discuss on the last part no, of our lesson two on sociological determinism. Let's move on to William Healy. Healy is known for the principle of individual delinquent. When we say delinquent, we're referring to people or person who suffer from behavioral disorder that is uh, against the rule of society. No? Kung baga sa psychology, we call it the antisocial personality. So, he focused on individual delinquency. That delinquency is the foundation or it is the stepping stone towards becoming a more hardened criminal. But the most notable one in the, in the traditional or in the contemporary psychological determinism is none less than Sigmund Freud. As a matter of fact, he was always or many times asked in the board exam. Sigmund Freud is well known because he is the father of the psychoanalytical theory, also known as psychodynamic theory or simply psychoanalysis. For him, he was able to identify three, no, tatlong bahagi ng pagkatao or personality. He was identifying three of them. What are they? They are the id or shortcut for instinctual drives, the ego, the gateway to action, and the superego, which they call the conscience. For Sigmund Freud, the reason why a person commits a crime is because of there is imbalance or there is no harmony between and among the three components of the human personality. Okay. The most powerful urge among the three is the id. Why? Because it is something that is within the person at birth. That's why it's called instinctual drives. We don't think of it. We just simply felt and we simply, no, seems to have been longing for such thing. That's why it's called drives, no? It is something that pushes us to do something like, for example, hunger, thirst. Those are drives that we don't think. We just simply, what, felt. That there is a need to be satisfied in our body. That's why the id is work on the principle of pleasure. Meaning, ang gusto lang ng id is yung magbibigay ng kaligayahan, kasayahan sa kanya. That's why it is somehow referred to by some personalities as the devil inside our body because it is a selfish part. The ego should be the one compensating the id. Why? Because it is known as the gateway to action, for in fact, it is the real us. The way we understand ourselves is our ego. Some people say it's pride that's wrong. Pride is only part of what ego is. It is the one that we develop and we become as we grow up. That's why our ego development is not also the same with individual. Why? Because we don't grow up with the same family, with the same environment, and with the same peers. Okay? But the ego is the reality. This is the real us, and this is the one that makes us decide many of the things that we are doing. Okay? But there is also one force that is known by Sigmund Freud, and that is the superego. That's why somehow we realize that there is a rational uh, judgment in our mind that even if we insist to do something wrong, at the end of the day, we felt incomplete. We felt not so satisfied of what we have done and what we have accomplished. Why? Because our conscience dictates that we have done something wrong. We did something that is not acceptable. That is the concept of the super ego. Okay? So that is for our biological and psychological determinism. The next part will be more on sociological. I intentionally left it for another session because there are much, much more personality that we have to discuss in relation to sociological determinism. So that's for today. Thank you so much and thank you for subscribing that we have already more than 1,000 subscribers. We're just aiming for more number of hours of a public viewing so please try to view all the lessons and finish it until the end so that you can be uh, gifted or what you called uh, I was able to give you more of the little knowledge that I have and hopefully you can make use of it in your personal and in your professional work thank you so much and God bless you all